These are all the tools I use to stay focused and the best part, they're all free. And let's start with an app that's so good, I don't even have it anymore. So you know when you want to stop checking apps like Instagram or TikTok and decide to just delete them? That might work for a while, but that habit is still in you. Eventually, you're going to reinstall them and tell yourself it's just one time. But next thing you know, you're back at it. And this is where one sec comes in. And the way it works is that every time I open a certain app, it forces me to sit through a timer before that app opens. But the thing is, most of the time, I just go on those apps out of habit. It's just memory muscle. I don't even think about it. And because of that, because it wasn't intentional and I was doing it mindlessly, a couple seconds is all I need to realize it and exit out of that screen. And the beauty of this is that I can still go on those apps, but it forces me to be super intentional with it. By default, it's 10 seconds, but you can change it to be higher or lower. I changed mine to 20 seconds and 9 times out of 10, I couldn't be bothered to wait and just exit it out of that screen. After a few months, I honestly forgot that I had Instagram installed because the app broke my habit of opening it up every time I picked up my phone. There's a paid version, but the free version is more than enough. Highly recommend. Alright, so the problem with extensions that block websites is that for a lot of us, we still need to go on those websites to see something related to our work. I go on YouTube all the time for my work, but every time I do, I'm faced with the homepage full of videos to distract me. Then, if I manage to get past that, once I find the video I need, I then have to face the sidebar recommendations. And that's why I use Unhooked, which is a Chrome extension, and what makes it different is that it doesn't block YouTube, but rather certain parts of it. For me, I don't want to see the home feed, the sidebar, and shorts. And now, when I open up YouTube, it's basically a black screen with a search bar on top. And once I find my video, I'm not tempted by the sidebar recommendations. And there's another extension that takes this approach to more than just YouTube. It's called Undistracted and it lets you do the same for sites like Twitter, Reddit and others. The reason I use both is because Undistracted doesn't let me block the homepage for YouTube. It only lets me redirect to my subscriptions. And I don't have to go through the hassle of enabling and disabling these extensions because that's where our next tool comes in, which is actually a browser. Specifically, a browser that has different profiles so you can separate work and personal. I use Arc, but plenty of browsers do this as well. So I have two profiles, one for when I'm working and another for when I'm not. And each profile has its own set of cookies, browser extensions and bookmarks. On my work profile, I have both of those extensions along with a few others that are relevant to my work. That way, I can go on any social media website without being distracted. But when I'm done for the day and I'm on my personal profile, I don't have those extensions installed, so there's no need to enable and disable. I take this a step further and have two different YouTube accounts, one for work where it's all technical videos and one for fun. This has the added benefit of helping the algorithm recommend me more interesting stuff as it's not mixing my personal and my work life. Safari also supports this as of recently and if you're in the Apple ecosystem, it might actually be your best bet because it integrates perfectly with the next tool which is focus modes. Because when I'm working, I have my work focus mode turned on that automatically blocks notifications from certain apps as well as calls from non-work people in my contacts. And the best part about using focus modes is that you can also change how certain apps behave. So on my work focus mode, I don't see any personal emails and I only see my work calendar. And the opposite happens when I get off work. And all of this is automated based on time, so I don't even have to think about it. I made a full video on focus modes that you can find right here. Alright, so I communicate with others in a ton of different platforms like Slack and Teams, but also on Twitter and even Instagram. But the problem with those is that if I want to go on them to see a message, I have to also see the feed, which makes it so much easier to spend more time there than I should. And that's where Beeper comes in, which aggregates all of my messages into one centralized location. It's also available on all platforms, so everything is synced across all of your devices. This used to be invite only for a long time, but it's now open to everyone. And this was also the reason why it was so easy to get rid of Instagram, because most of the time I was going there was to talk to other people. But with Beeper, I can still receive and reply to messages on Instagram, even without having it installed. There's a competitor to Beeper called Texts, but I've never had a reason to switch, so I can't speak for it. Another tool I use, but only for certain types of work, is a Pomodoro timer. You probably know what it is, but in short, it's when you work for 25 minutes, followed by a 5 minute break. 
and after four sessions, you take a longer break, typically for 20 minutes. And I use this for tasks that don't require continuous focus. For instance, if I'm cutting up a video, I don't need to stay in flow. I can come in and out of it easily, so using a timer works great here. But if I'm doing more creative work, then I can't have a timer interrupt my train of thought as it takes a long time to refocus. And there's plenty of Pomodoro apps. I use Session because it's included with Setup. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to Setup in the description that gets you 30 days of free trial instead of 7. But there are plenty of free alternatives like Flow that are just as good. Or you can get a physical timer like this here that rings when the time is up. And I need to have some sort of system that gets me to move after a while so I don't sit for too long. And there's a ton of apps that do this, but the problem with those is that you have to set how often you want to take a break and they interrupt whatever you're doing to let you know when it's time to do it. But sometimes I'm in flow and I don't want to be interrupted and break my chain of thought. So instead, I use this free little app called Pendon that lives in my menu bar and tells me how long I've been sitting for. That's all it does, and if I get up and take a break, it knows I haven't been active, so it restarts itself. This is the only thing I found that works for me because eventually, for one reason or another, I will glance at the menu bar and if I see that I've been sitting for too long, I'll get up and move around a little. Alright, so I was never a fan of listening to music when I'm working because it takes me out of focus. But there's a good amount of evidence that certain types of music can actually help you focus. And there's an app that was made specifically for this called Endel. And the way it works is that it produces different sounds for all kinds of different activities, like working, studying and relaxing, and also working out and sleeping. And it connects to the health app on your phone, so if you're walking, it knows your pace and will adjust the sound accordingly. It also takes into consideration your location, heart rate and time of day. I put this as an honorable mention because Endel is still new to me. I can't speak for all the activities you can use it for, but I have been using it to focus for a while now and I've been really enjoying it. I don't know if it's placebo, but it does make my work more enjoyable. The paid version unlocks a few bells and whistles, but the free version is good enough for me. It also has a web app, which is the way I use it the most. I want to also mention what I found to not work for me, and that's time tracking. Honestly, the thought of using something like Toggle and track every waking minute seems just inhumane to me. I can maybe understand those that do it for a week just to see where their time is going, but for me, it just takes all the joy out of my day. And the other thing that also doesn't work for me is time blocking, which I've made a whole video about that you can find right here. This video was very kindly sponsored by Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant builds your understanding from the ground up with concepts, which has been proven to be six times more effective than simply watching lecture videos. And their content is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, and more. If you're just getting started with programming, you first need to rewire your brain to think like a programmer. And that's exactly what Brilliant's course, Thinking in Code, is all about. It will help you get familiar with Python and learn essential coding elements. Then you can progress to more advanced courses like Programming with Python, where you'll learn to write code interactively. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash from Sergio and you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And a big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. And like I said before, if you want to learn more about focus modes, I made a full video about it that you can find right here. So I'll see you there.